Hey, sports better. Yes, you. Guess what? Your favorite sports book, BetUS.com, is back for its 28th year of NFL action. So, here's what you got to do. Just click the link below in my description box and sign up today. BetUS.com, where the game begins. Long enough to cover the subject and short enough to keep it interesting. Welcome to Outta My League. I'm Nick Diaz. You know what the biggest thing I was excited about for this season? Good coaching. Not perfect coaching. I'll take mistakes, especially in a transition year, but just no dysfunctional BS, like under Les Miles or Ed Ogeron, right? Just make adjustments week to week. You know, no outdated schemes, no head coach fighting with coordinators in the, in the locker room. Have reasonable answers to questions as to why you did something. I don't have to agree with it. I don't have to agree with it, but I have to understand it. A reasonable explanation. Uh, But another thing that I should have added to that list is a head coach not giving away everything he's thinking in a press conference, similar to what Ed Ogeron has done the last six years. See, my whole conclusion on the Jaden Daniels versus Garrett Nussmeyer situation was, why is a redshirt freshman who has never started a game still splitting first-team reps with a guy who has started 29 games as a redshirt junior. Why? Why is that still the case? Because some of you who are new to my channel probably don't know this, but I was in the Jaden Daniels fan club back in spring. I was a big Jaden Daniels supporter. I said, well, why bring him in if you're not going to play him? Obviously, uh, he's in the lead, okay? This, This usually happens when you bring in an experienced transfer quarterback. And then the reports about Nussmeyer that came out, I thought were kind of bullshit. I'm like, there's no way. But then more reports about Nussmeyer came, and Nuss gets into fall camp, and he's still splitting first-team reps, and Brian Kelly keeps saying the same thing over and over and over again, and then I start watching more games of Jaden Daniels, and then I changed my mind and said, hold on a second, maybe there's something to this. Turns out, all of it was bullshit. All of it. I should have just stuck to my gut instinct from the start all the way back when Jaden Daniels entered the transfer portal and came to LSU. Because Nussmeyer is not a ter- terrible quarterback. He's not, okay? He reads his progressions very well. He throws on time and in rhythm. He can make throws that Jaden Daniels just can't make. But there's one problem that Garrett Nussmeyer has. One. His ego. He refuses to give up on a play. He refuses to run out of bounds. He refuses to just throw the ball away. He doesn't realize that, dude, you're not a running back. You're not an offensive lineman. You're a quarterback. It's okay to give up on a play. It's like watching Brett Favre in his early years at Green Bay. No, I'm not comparing, you know, saying Garrett Nussmeyer is going to be the next Brett Favre. I'm going to, you know, see somebody who reads Tiger Droppings email me something. Oh, did you see this? They're talking about you. Oh, Nick Diaz says Garrett Nussmeyer is the next Brett Favre. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm simply saying that a really talented guy that can do just about everything right, intelligence, arm talent, moxie, awareness, all those things, but he just can't let his ego go. He just can't do it. He would rather throw a pick six than tell a defensive player, I gave up on a play. You beat me. He would rather do that. Uh, I think he is somebody that when you when you're in that number two position, I'm not here to make excuses for him. You press a little bit, right? You want to, you know, you have another quarterback who's led eight consecutive touchdown drives. You're trying to press. You want to get on the field. And, and he doesn't need to do that. We have great confidence in him. He just needs to let the game come to him. Well, Nussmeyer has to get over that. He has to. And all these people saying, and I got it on my live chat last night, Oh, he's done. Put in Walker Howard at second string. Uh, Nussmeyer just doesn't have it in him. Oh, hold, 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 hold. Let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater, okay? That's a horrible idea. Go rewatch the Southern game and just take out those two interceptions. Nuss was running a very different style of offense than Jaden Daniels. He was running much more of a pro-style passing game when he was in. Drop back, read the whole field. Uh, He was making all the throws accurate and on time. He was dissecting the defense like a surgeon. He 
um, was going through his progressions. His wide receivers never had to stop or slow down, which as good as Jane Daniels has played, wide receivers still have to slow down or fall behind on certain throws, even though they're good enough and they're making it completed. So to throw the baby out with the bathwater for a guy like Garrett Nussmeyer, who is that talented, who has never started a game as a red shirt freshman and just be like, yeah, give up on him. That's foolish. That's foolish. But Nussmeyer is not making mistakes. He's not making mistakes. Nussmeyer is making bad decisions. A mistake is when you read the defense and coverage incorrectly. Nuss is not doing that. Nuss is the son of an NFL coach. He's not doing that. Nuss is simply making the decision to not throw the ball away when the defense has you beat. Nuss has to learn to put his pride away when the defense wins. And there is only one person who can fix that, and that's Garrett Nussmeyer. Now, as of right now, with this LSU football team and this offensive line, I would much rather have a quarterback that can't quite make all the throws but never loses you a game, and especially is mobile, than a quarterback who can make every throw imaginable but will make prideful decisions to lose you the game. So to all the Nussbus people out there who are a little discouraged, don't jump off the bus. Simply park the bus and let Jaden Daniels take the wheel and drive you home the rest of the season. Okay, as far as the rest of the team goes, look, I'm not going to break down the Southern game bit by bit. It is what it is. But I will tell you, with Jaden Daniels, He has clearly improved his throwing motion and his footwork, as what was reported. But my question has always been his accuracy in the intermediate passing game. Now, he did make one touchdown pass against Southern that was, in my opinion, from what I've seen of him, probably the best pass I've ever seen him throw, especially in the intermediate route. It was the touchdown to Jack Besh in the back of the end zone. He's rolling against his body to the left. He keeps his eyes downfield. He doesn't run it. He, he threw a pass on time, on target, where Jack Besh didn't have to fall back, fall forward, or anything. That's the best throw I've ever seen from Jaden Daniels. Now, I did see a few passes that were caught but underthrown, but that's neither here nor there. Because it all goes back to one thing. If this quarterback battle, was in fact bullshit and all political you know, fodder that, that was there to sort of distract us, and Brian Kelly was doing that on purpose. Let's assume that was true, all right? Let's assume that, because that's the scuttlebutt right now with the media. I'm kind of pissed that Brian Kelly didn't just give Jaden Daniels all the reps in practice at least two weeks or so before the Florida State game, which is what most college coaches were doing with their starting quarterbacks, give them two weeks to prepare. Like, okay, if they had made that decision several weeks before the Florida State game, like, yeah, we're just going to, you know, distract people and say this is still a quarterback battle and we're going to split reps with both both quarterbacks, well, why ruin your rhythm with the offense? You've proven your point. It's been a quarterback battle. You've given them each a fair shot. Well, Nick, I mean, Brian Kelly was trying to gain an advantage by throwing Florida State for a loop. Really? You scored three points through three quarters. How did that work out? It might have cost you the Florida State game. Because a lot of the issues in that game, and so far with this offense, have come down to protection on the offensive line and communication and rhythm with the wide receivers. And the quarterback is responsible for both of those things. And it's hard to do that, get those things fixed, splitting reps all offseason. At least give him two weeks. But, or maybe it was a quarterback battle and this wasn't bullshit by Brian Kelly. I don't know. Uh, either way, I don't think that's the best way to handle it. I think at some point you make a call and if someone can handle it, boo-hoo. But speaking of protection, the offensive line made some big changes against Southern. Dellinger is no longer at center. They moved him to left guard. Miles Frazier is no longer at left guard. They moved him to right tackle. And Charles Turner is now your starting center. The big question is, why? Well, for one, the center's main priority is to do two things. Snap the ball cleanly and call and communicate the right pass protection. Garrett Dellinger cannot do that efficiently right now. He can't. 
he's capable of doing it eventually, but not right now for a guy who just started playing the center position five weeks ago. Charles Turner, he can do all of those things and do them well and do them consistently because he's been playing center his entire career at at LSU, just mostly as a backup. But another problem that you had was right tackle, Cam Wire. He's just not good, okay? It, it just He just can't cut it, especially not as a starter in the SEC. And your other big problem is that your run game needs help because your left guard, Miles Frazier, is really a tackle playing out of position at guard. And guards are really your main helpers in the run game. It starts and ends with the guard play if you want to be good and efficient at running the football. Well, you can't move Emory Jones in as a starter. I mean, you could, but if you did that at, say, right tackle to fix your tackle problem, then both of your tackles are true freshmen. That's not good. And if you move Emory Jones to, say, left guard, well, then your entire left side is nothing but true freshmen with Campbell and Emory Jones, alongside your first-time center who just started playing center five weeks ago that can't make all the calls correctly. That's not a recipe for success. Talented, but you've got a lot of non-talent issues in that situation. But moving Dellinger to left guard helps your run game more. Your right tackle problem is now more talented with Miles Frazier, which is his natural position. And now your center can actually snap the ball and call the correct pass protection 95% of the time. The only downside to all of this is that Charles Turner is a little undersized for center in the modern-day football era. But considering the cost versus gain in this situation, I'll take that all day. And Brian Kelly said as much today, this is the combo you will see going forward the rest of the season. Thanks for listening to Out of My League. If you like what you heard, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Or follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok in the description link below.